Today's lesson is from 1.3 on rates of change. I want to do a little example for you. I, I know you're probably saying, oh, I know all about average and instantaneous rate of change. Yes, yes, yes. But today we're going to apply it to a position function. And I want to do that by giving you a little example that I always did with my class, which makes things very simple to understand. Let's talk about going on a trip somewhere. So let's say I live in Ottawa and I'm going to drive to Toronto and it's about 400 kilometers away. So if I asked you um, if it took me four hours to go 400 kilometers, what was my average rate of change? So I'm sure you would say 400 kilometers divided by four hours would be 100 kilometers per hour. So that's my average rate of change. It's my average of the trip, right? So if I said to you, if I left at 10 o'clock, how fast was I going at 11 o'clock? Well, that's a little bit harder for you to answer, isn't it? You don't know how fast I was going at 11 o'clock. You would be, if you were in your car, you could look down and check out the speedometer, right? Your speedometer which tells you your speed at a certain point in time. So this speedometer, maybe I was on the 401 by then and I was going, might say it was doing 110 kilometers per hour. And I shouldn't be going faster than that because the speed limit is 100. Although if you've ever been on the 401, you know that no one does 110 kilometers per hour on that road. So this is like your derivatometer. Your speedometer is actually telling you your instantaneous rate of change at a specific point in time. That's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? So in math, if we were talking about the average velocity, the average velocity is the slope of a secant. So that's what we were doing here by saying 400 divided by four, right? So it was like 400 minus zero over four hours minus zero hours. So we ended up with uh, 400 minus zero divided by four gave me 100 kilometers per hour. So that's like distance divided by time gives you speed. And you probably did that in um, physics in grade nine or 10. You had your velocity, so distance, uh, speed, time. And you can find one or the other using your little triangle. And I hope I've written that out right. So here it is. Um, that's your average velocity. Now, if I want to know what the speed is, the instant rate of change, the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so no big deal. You've done slope of tangent lines before. So this becomes a limit function. So the speed or the velocity at a certain point in time is a limit as h approaches zero of the position, so this is your position function, right? Your position function a plus h minus s at a divided by h. Okay, so that's that's the same equation we used in the last lesson, only this time we're using position function to get velocity. And it just so happens that derivative, the derivative of the position function, so if I give you the position function is s at t, is a position function, position function, then s prime t, s prime t is going to be my velocity function. And we can go one step farther, and you will do that in another lesson, but just a little heads up, if I take the derivative of the velocity function, I'm going to get acceleration. And we'll talk more about that later on in the course. So let's do a little example. This is, I think, number 17 from your textbook. I wanted to do something that wasn't right um, in your textbook. Always read the textbook. There's lots of useful questions there. Um, so let's take a look at this one. It says the motion, and again, this is 17. The motion of an avalanche is described by, this is the position function, s at t equals 3t squared, where s is the distance in meters traveled by the leading edge of the snow at t seconds. So everything is well defined in the question. Find the distance traveled from 0 to 5 seconds. Well, if I put in 0 here, s at 0 is 0. So it started from 0. And at 5 seconds, that's all I really need to find out here. What is s at 5? s at 5 would be equal to 3 times 5 squared, which of course is 75. 
So therefore, um, distance, I always make a nice concluding statement for beautiful format, distance traveled is 75 meters. Okay, so the second question says, find the rate, rate, okay, so rate of change. So is it average or instantaneous? It says find the rate at which the avalanche is moving from zero to 10 seconds. So it's important for you to understand what you're actually being asked here from zero to 10. So as soon as you see from something to something, you're being asked to find the average rate of change or the slope of the secant. So S at 10 is going to be equal to, so I have three times 10 squared, which is 300 meters. And my S at zero was zero. So I have, it's always a good idea to write them out as coordinates because then it's so much easier to find the slope because you're familiar with calculating slope. So the slope here, which is the slope of a secant, is going to be 300 minus zero over 10 minus zero. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. You'll either have two positive numbers or two positive numbers or negative numbers, which will divide out to be positive and I get 30, so therefore 30 meters per second. So that's what you would do for those two. Now let's go on to the second part of the question. It says, find the rate at which the avalanche is moving at 10 seconds. So when it says at 10 seconds, that's at a very specific time, right? So we're looking for the instantaneous rate of change for which you will use the limit definition for velocity at 10 seconds. Okay, so my velocity, which is the instantaneous rate of change, the rate at which is changing, that's going to be S prime T, which is equal to VT. You don't have to write all of that out. You could write just that or this one. It's going to be the limit, and you should never put two equal signs on one line, right? Don't forget your limit here. So we want the limit as h approaches zero of the position function at t plus h minus s at t divided by h. Nice straight line. Okay, so I need to plug that in to my equation. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches zero of it's 3t squared. I should write that equation out again here. So I'm going to plug in um, 3 times... Oh, I'm going to put 10 in here now. Let's get an eraser. Make it really pretty. 3 at 10 plus h squared minus 3 at 10 squared over h. And again, all I've done is plug in t plus h in for t and 10 in for t. And h here is our limit as h approaches zero. So we want to make sure you write that out properly. So this is the limit as h approaches zero. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to expand all this. I'm going to keep it all in this line. You can bring the 3 out here. Sometimes teachers might let you do that. You'd say 3 times the limit because they both have a 3. But I'm going to expand it the long way just to show you. So we square twice the product and square minus 3 times 100 which is 300. Now remember what I told you that when you're doing these equations if you're doing the limit as h approaches 0 we need to, in the numerator, have an h2 divide out with the h in the denominator or we won't be able to find what happens at zero. So make sure that you end up with something like that or you've made a mistake. It will work out that way. Believe me, watch. 300 plus 20h plus h. Oh, sorry. Didn't do that right, did I? Don't forget to multiply by 3. Okay, 300 plus 60h plus 3h squared minus 300 divided by h. And you can see right away that my 300s, 
300 plus 300 minus 300. And I do have an H here in both of the, um, the terms that are left here. I'll write that out nicely for you. Limit as H approaches zero. And I'm going to factor out that H. So I have 60 plus 3H over H. And of course, these H's cancel out here. And they divide into each other, you probably would say. And then when h is 0, as soon as I plug in h is 0, I don't need this limit anymore. Right? You've probably done enough of that practice now. So if I put in h is 0, I get 60. So that means the IRC, which I'm going to write as the instantaneous rate of change, is 60 meters per second. Okay, so this is again using that um, little skill you learned in 1.2 to find out an instantaneous rate of change or a, a, the, um, the rate at a specific time. Okay, when you see at, that means IRC. And the last part of the question says, how long to the near second does the leading edge of the snow take to move 600 meters? So the position function, S at T, equals 3t squared. Now sometimes people get a little confused with word problems and you know they think they're much harder than they are and sometimes you don't need to be doing a derivative. Sometimes for this one it says how long does it take to move 600 meters? So that means when is s at t equal to 600? Well that's pretty easy. You just plug it in here and solve for time. So we have 600 is 3t squared so 200 is t squared, and t is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 200. And I would say, but t is greater than or equal to 0, because you can't have negative time. So t is approximately equal to the square root of 200, comes out to about 14 seconds. Therefore, it takes 14 seconds. Okay, so that's that's all there is in, in 1.3. There's some other exercises dealing with the same kind of work, rates of change, instantaneous and average, and you should be pretty good with that by now. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe.